Hey guys. Hello. So Stu, are you going to bounce out pretty soon? Did you want me to lead? If you could, I I don't I will have to leave early almost certainly. So if you wouldn't mind leading, no problem. So I will post a link to our community document here in the chat. Let's see what we have on our agenda. Wait a few more minutes.
All right, so to start out, do we have any new members this week that would like to introduce themselves or talk about their use case or anything like that? Nope. Going once, twice, guess not. Um, all right, so for our agenda, we have one item so far, and I'll let Ed uh, take the floor. Uh, this is a small one, I hope. Uh, during one of the reviews, there was question, uh, there were raised some questions. If we need to ha add a header license for each file, each source file that we create. So, but what I saw in other, in Kubernetes and in the rest of the project, it is done like that, but it seems like it is not, first, it is not enforced. And secondly, not, uh, sometime it is not done. So it either missed or it's not a must, which is odd a little bit, but uh, that's- Yeah, that's the um, it is not a must. Uh, we can decide to do it because many do it, but it's uh, from a legal point, not a must. We clarified that at some point. Okay, so I think it's, I didn't saw any reference to that. So I think we need to, I mean, we need to at least document it that it is not a must, but if it's not a must, it's very odd that we'll have like a mixture of this. The, the license, the, the Apache license itself is recommending, is recommending it. It's not a must there. The, then the question now is how the project are deciding on this. But it will be odd that some of the files are not like that and some are. But, but again, we can, if we document this is not a must, then fine. I kind of like having the header there, but it's not a must. I don't know. I, I don't know. We just need to spend a whole lot of time on it. Uh, the, the reason I like the header is when, uh, for example, when we pull in something from Kubernetes, sometimes we pull in the actual source files. That happens rarely, but it's occasionally. And we leave their header at the top of the file until it gives me an indication of like where, where this code came from uh, if we pulled it from somewhere else. And maybe some people find that useful. They pull code directly from our code base for some reason and, and they'll vendor it through like GoMod. Uh, that, that's, uh, yeah. that's it. That's I think fine. having it mandatory is fine too. I would just ensure that we have a tool which updates them and adds them automatically. That would be my only requirement. What's wrong with best effort? We should do it. No. If it's yeah, I mean, yeah, it just meant if we want to make it a requirement, uh, my, only, my only requirement would be that it just gets added. And uh, we don't have to spend time on that and refuse or so. But it, I don't if, need if it as a must. If it's if it's a requirement, then we can we, we can add a, a test for it. Like it should check that it is there, and that's it. Then I think that I saw some project that do that. But uh, if it's not, then it's up to the maintainer. I think that we can probably steal some, some, uh, or copy some, some things from. I've seen that Kubert Test Infra, for example, does that, um, so that it checks for uh, uh, files or for for uh, uh, such commands being being around, and uh, if they are not there, it adds it somehow. So um, yeah. Okay, thanks. By the way, the, the, it's interesting, like the copyright now is on the definition there is like a covert uh, contributor. It's not, uh, so if someone from a different company, from different companies are uh, adding code, it's, uh, it's they use the same uh, copyright, right? That's the, the idea? Yes, uh, it should then be, the copyright should then be for the, Qubit project and not for yeah. the individual contributor. And the individual contributor is with signing the commit, approving that he has right, the right to give that copyright to the Qubit project. Okay, good. Uh, so, so maybe that's what David said, like uh, 
if you take if you take something from COVID for Kubernetes, for example, or from some other project, then you are supposed to keep the copyright, right? You yeah. need to edit. So that's the only place where it's a must, I guess. But yeah, then it we makes agree it, to that. Uh, Anyway, we need to document this somewhere. I guess in the in the contribution uh, section should be this should be added. Then we, if we can do an automation of this, it would be good. All right. Anything else on that topic before we move on? Okay. Let's go on to the open floor and Stu, you had some something to say about all things open. Yes, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, so on the all things open uh, conference, that'll be the 16th through the 18th of October. Um, and the possibility was raised that it might be possible for, it, for us to have a virtual booth. And I was just hoping to try and bring that to this forum and see if there's any interest in that, because of course that will require uh, volunteers and coverage to staff. Uh, you know, as a virtual booth, of course, there's no travel uh, requirement in this. It's just that we do need to probably have coverage throughout um, at least uh, the European and American work days, I'd say probably late afternoon Europe, because I think all things open is in Raleigh. So it'd be uh, late in the day in Europe and uh, within the, the work day in the US. So is that something people are interested in? Okay, I will bring that to the mailing list and see if anybody would be willing to volunteer that way. Um, or if this is just something that we don't have the, the staffing for at this point. I'll put it in the chat. I'm interested. Ah, sorry, I missed that. Thank you. Okay, and how's that conference going? Um, I guess you're presenting by yourself now. Yes. Um, well, you know, and that's that's actually a, an interesting question that we're negotiating right now is whether or not the Delta variant is really making it a good idea to travel uh, at this point. Um, you know, in in the absence of any other guidance. So, I you know, honestly, I would say it may be up in the air whether or not this is going to be an in person or a virtual event at this point. Uh, anyway, so, you know, and so I, yeah, I, I unfortunately have to give you a non-committal answer about that even. Yeah, that makes sense. And I think a lot of people feel the same way about KubeCon as well. It's, it's kind of thrown us for a loop the past few months. Okay, so moving on, uh, we have some pull requests that need attention. So the first one, Daniel, it looks like you have one. Did you want to talk about that? Yeah, sure. Um, this is just a uh, change in the uh, pre-submit uh, pre -submit checks for the Qubit project uh, for the provider of 121. Um, I've checked uh, today um, how the periodics look. And besides the uh, quarantine jobs, everything looks to pass. So I at least would opt for uh, making those required as the pull request wants to do. Um, yeah, if, if uh, uh, leads from the team or if, uh, if those are not present, uh, somebody else from the several teams like networking or from the sixth could have a look at that PR and, um, and check whether they are fine with that just to make it required. That would be great. That's all I'm asking for. Thank you. Okay, so this is only for the kubevert kubevert repo, and it's talking about the um, 1.21 version of Kubernetes. I'm curious, can we drop a version, like a pre previous version of Kubernetes now? Um, at the moment, not, I think. I think we only have, uh, at the moment, we have just uh, support for 1.19 
throughout 121. We are still working on uh, on the 122 Kubernetes support. Um, but when that's done, when the provider is present and, and jobs are there, then we could drop 119. But yeah, we're not there yet. Okay, and our policy is um, three versions of Kubernetes? I'd say so. I'm not sure, uh, to be honest, I don't exactly recall how our policy on that is, but I think that we should at least have three versions uh, at all times that are tested, right? But yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure, to be honest. Yeah, I think that's what we agreed a long time ago. And I, I think the reason for that was that was the number of versions that Kubernetes actually supports. So they have like a rolling three, previous three versions. Uh, so we at least know that we're staying um, compatible with what the Kubernetes upstream uh, is supporting. Yeah, yeah at, at least um, we have automation in place to automatically uh, create new providers and, and create the Check, pre check provisioning uh, for those new providers. We are still in the process of creating the new automation for the, for the new jobs that need to get created on that, um, which I'm currently looking into. Um, and yeah, when we, did, when we are there, we, we could also automate um, dropping uh, all those old providers that are not needed anymore. But yeah, like I said, we're not there yet. Alrighty. I have Either. a question about. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I have a question about this one because I'm looking at the PR and I see that the, there were changes also in one for 120, which some of them were not mandatory and now they seem to be. And if is it like uh, intentional? And there are other changes too, the, that which I don't understand what they are. But uh, so how did how this uh, automation? change all, all of this stuff regarding regarding the uh, changes uh, uh, this is a formatting change like um, we are uh, consuming uh, the uh, yaml from go code and um, updating the required fields on the jobs and yeah if, if you have seen something that was not previously required and is not required that might be a bug but I think I personally checked and, I, and it, um, it only removed um, uh, obsolete um, uh, default values, if I, if I am correct. But yeah, please, uh, team leads on the other teams, please check again whether that is somehow the case, that there are bugs or something. That is what uh, pull request reviews are for, I guess. Yeah, but, but I'm going to back to check that. But yeah, um, the formatting changes come through consuming this YAML and then changing that. You know, I'm, I was not wanting to uh, just uh, doing something like an SED or something on, on, those, uh, on those files. I was uh, rather hoping I could just reuse the uh, uh, Kubernetes available um, uh, definitions for those YAMLs and, and just change the fields and then write them back. And I think this is also better because in general, I think that all those um, uh, YAML definitions of jobs are all, uh, in general, should should be, um, for example, um, should be alpha sorted alphabetically and so on. And that is also what the uh, re uh, serializing of the new uh, of the new definition does. Okay. Thank you. All right, anything else on that topic before we move on to uh, a pull request that Kevin has? Okay, Kevin, what do you have? You might be on mute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, my, yeah, it's gonna be like my microphone. Um, yeah, I just wanted to, to bring Shadow here really quick because it's uh, been around for a bit. Um, for the Go routine leak fix uh, we had merged, I think last week, um, we, I had to do a, a different fix for everything below release 0 0.41 because we are on all the Go language and that doesn't expose an error. And that backport would need 
review or approval if anybody is interested has time and then we can finish the chair picks for all the other releases behind that um, i just triggered a retest one test was failing but i think it was unrelated that's curious so I'm trying to look at the difference between these two PRs. Uh, the difference is um, starting with Go 114, I think, uh, the net package exposes the error error closed uh, that gets returned when you are reading or writing on that closed network connection. Before that, it didn't for some reason. Uh, and I'm using that in the up to date fix, but uh, the only way to find out if the network connection was closed is to check now with the previous op error if the error it gets is a temporary error or not and a close is not temporary error so that's the only way for us to find out if it was a closed except reading the error string and checking if there's a closed in it i don't know but that didn't sound right that's interesting so should we be checking for both of these i'm i'm uncertain uh What's the side effect, for example, if somebody tries to build our current um, Qvert main branch with a old version of Golang? Will things just unexpectedly not? It run? won't build. It won't, oh, it won't build. build. Okay, that's good. All right, at it's least it won't error. build. All right. Yeah. Um, that's better. That's why I had to change it. Because otherwise, we probably wouldn't have found it. I yeah. Uh. That's even <laughs> that's, <laughs> more concerning. Yeah. So that's what I was getting at. Um, Interesting. So you're. I was a bit surprised that this wasn't exposed before. So yeah. Just to uh, use. The interesting this. part is line three hundred four. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Different check. And are you able to have some sort of unit test that verifies that the go routine closes? Um, I thought about that. I wouldn't know how. Yeah. I mean. We could add another listen on the listener and see if that gets closed in a unit test, but it wouldn't guarantee the go routine goes away. It just guarantees that close is called at some point, but that doesn't fix the go routine problem itself. Right. Uh, yeah. Those no things are. Way. Yeah, I'm looking at that go routine and there's nothing that is closed within it. There's no indication. It's kind of a silent uh, go routine as far as being able to detect it. All right. Mm. Well, I think that's the best you can do. How are, how, hmm, how are you able to verify that it closed, I guess? I did the same test as before with running the density test and checking that no go routines are left over. And I think there should be a graph. Uh, in the main PR, a Grafana snapshot is attached. I didn't attach one for this one. Interesting. Kind of proof by testing. It's not gr great, but metrics all we have for that case, sadly. So I'm curious if we had a, a functional test and we got a, a go routine dump using that new pprof um, tool that I've been working on. Is there any way we could introspect that to discover if, would that even be practical to discover if any of these are left? If we know that no more VM eyes exist in the system, we would expect to see no Go routines in a certain package or something like that? Mm, that would, yes, I think we could check for, the problem is the word handler, this, this, this stuff is in, the vert handler package. That's right. Very generic. The, the exact path could be tracked. I think something we would want to look at more in general is adding um, leftover Go routines somehow to our general control plane tests to see if APR introduces leftover Go routines after a density test somehow. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. That would be something for tomorrow. Yeah, we could talk about that in six scale. Interesting. Yeah, this is something else for us to begin thinking about when we look at code reviews and uh, think about scaling. And this issue, if it manifested itself as a, an actual 
problem uh, over time, would it be that memory keeps on increasing because our go routines, even though these are kind of, these go routines don't do anything really, except. Um, to some extent, the go routines hold on to resources that won't get garbage collected. So I didn't see a big memory impact, but I saw the, um, uh, the the general load CPU load of the vert handler like, increasing and at some point when there was too many leftover go routines vert handler didn't I I can't prove that it was the case because of that could also have been just overload cluster but in some cases vert handler goes completely crazy and until all VMs are deleted and it's kind of like it's CP, vert handler CPU load stays up and doesn't go down at some point. And okay. some of our Q people have seen the same, but I still can't prove it's because of this. Okay. Sadly. Yeah. Well, good investigation. We'll need to do more of this, I think, and hopefully it kind of lock things down where we see less of this uh, surprise us later on. I mean, the, the best way I, I've only done it for Red Handler. I think about, I thought about doing it for more places, but actually how to find those before we had P profits easier now, but it was just uh search all files in our code base for go uh go space <laughs> and look up on at all the go routines we start and yeah. some of them resulted in findings well good work anything else on this topic no it's just just i, I just want to get backports through finally <laughs> okay uh i can make a note to myself to look at that. Thanks. I don't know if it's worth a general note. I, I wouldn't know where to put it, but uh, I think it's some places we can be more aware of when we, when and how we start go routines to make sure we clean up and if we really need them. Yeah, some of the, there's some patterns that we can begin to look for more closely. Like one of the ones, the simplest one that I think you identified uh, when you were doing this investigation. That the copy worth, and unbuffer channels. Unbuffer channels get us in trouble a lot yeah. because uh, we attempt to write to an unbuffer channel in a go routine. And then if uh, something happens, <laughs> where it's not red or whatever, it just hangs and forever. And that's a problem. Um, okay. So I guess we can go on to the mailing list now. And I don't think we had a whole lot of new items here. Uh, from last week, the only one that I see, so we have two that I see. It's the SR uh, IOV network issue, which it looks like we already have people uh, responding to. Is there any, does anybody have an update on that or is that worth discussing in this form? Which, which topic again, sorry. Qvert <clears throat> uh, SR IOV network issues. I'll post a link. Sorry, I, I can't share my screen easily. Uh, I was not prepared for this. But this is the Qbert dev mailing list post that I'm talking about. And we don't have to talk about it here if it's not pertinent. I was just given the opportunity to discuss it further if it made sense. Oh, somebody's doing my work for me. Excellent. Okay, it sounds like it's just debug, uh, trying to figure out where packets go. I think we can. Yeah, I think it was not answered by the, right? <clears throat> I see or and uh, another, there were two to answer or an handler that tried to help him. I didn't see an answer, or did we? No. 
And the other one we have is this launch security in Qvert. It's the second one from the top. Uh, this one's pretty interesting. I think this conversation has been going on for a really long time. But it's talking about those um, AMD and Intel. Uh, well, maybe this is mainly focused on the AMD um, SEV extension, which uh, I think that encrypts memory. Um, yeah, where do we get here? Is there anything new worth talking about? I think we're just waiting for a clarification. Okay. All right, do you want to talk about it or uh, should we, do we have another one we want to look at? Well, so Vladek, you mentioned that we need to commit to an API. Uh, I remember looking at this PR or the discussion a little bit. Um, what are your, are you concerned about the way the API is being constructed right now? Or um, it sounds um, like you're uncertain about how it's going to change in the future. So we might box exactly. ourselves in. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, mainly, I, I don't know. I mean, if we were going to do the attestation uh, in a certain way, um, I'm, I'm just not sure. This launch securely also, it's it's a term that uh, I think was taken from Libvirt. Um, but um, I think uh, the general discussion right now, it's uh, for uh, confidential, comp com confidential computing um, and um, I think the, the the overall API may change. So I don't know if we are, um, what's the current benefit of just introducing um, this device uh, right now without uh, the attestation? So I, I'm just not sure. I mean, I, I would like uh, Vasily to, to answer or somebody to um, clarify. Okay. Just as, as I don't know much about it, that it, this is not related to secure boot. This is something else, right? Yeah, that's something else. Okay. Large security and secure boot seem very close together <laughs> from the wording. Okay. I guess we will leave this on the mailing list then. Um, let's look. Do we have anything else? Does anyone have any, anything else they want to bring up? I, I don't think I'm going to go through the, the bugs today. If not, we can call this a early meeting and give you all back some time. All right. Have a great remaining day. Yeah. Catch you all later. Thanks for joining. Bye. Bye. Thank you. See you. Bye.